Jean-Aude Wanwada, French, an underscore twin Vado, baptized October 10, 1684, died July 18, 1721, better known as Antoine Wada, was a French painter whose brief career spurred the revival of interest in color and movement, as seen in the tradition of Correggio and Rubens. He revitalized the waning Baroque style, shifting it to the less severe, more naturalistic, less formally classical Rococo. Wada is credited with inventing the genre of fates galants, scenes of bucolic and idyllic charm, suffused with a theatrical air. Some of his best-known subjects were drawn from the world of Italian comedy and ballet. Early life and training, Wada was born in October 1684 in the town of Valenciennes which had recently passed from the Spanish Netherlands to France. His father, Jean-Philippe Wada, was a roof for given to brawling. Showing an early interest in painting, jean one may have been apprenticed to Jacques Albert Gerin, a local painter. jean one's first artistic subjects were Charlotte and selling quack remedies on the streets of Valenciennes. Watte left for Paris in 1702. There he found employment in a workshop at Pont Notre Dame, making copies of popular genre paintings in the Flemish and Dutch tradition. It was in that period that he developed his characteristic sketch-like technique. By 1705 he was employed as an assistant by the painter Claude Gillot, whose work represented a reaction against the turgid official art of Louis XIV's reign. In Gillot's studio Wada became acquainted with the characters of the Comédie de l'Art, its actors had been expelled from France in 1697, a favorite subject of Gillot's that would become one of Wada's lifelong passions. Afterward he moved to the workshop of Claude Audrin III, an interior decorator, under whose influence he began to make drawings admired for their consummate elegance. Audrin was the curator of the Palais du Luxembourg, where Wada was able to see the magnificent series of canvases painted by Peter Paul Rubens for Queen Marie de Medici. The Flemish painter would become one of his major influences. Together with the Venetian masters he would later study in the collection of his patron and friend, the banker Pierre Crozet. Later career, in 1709 Wada tried to obtain the Prix de Rome and was rejected by the Academy. In 1712 he tried again and was considered so good that, rather than receiving the one-year stay in Rome for which he had applied, he was accepted as a full member of the Academy. He took five years to deliver the required reception piece, but it was one of his masterpieces, the pilgrimage to Scythera, also called the embarkation for Scythera. Wada lacked aristocratic patrons, his buyers were bourgeois such as bankers and dealers. Among his most famous paintings, beside the two versions of the pilgrimage to Scythera, one in the Louvre, the other in the Schloss Charlottenburg, Berlin, R.P. Roth, long identified as Gilles, Fates Venetien, Love in the Italian Theater, Love in the French Theater, Vles Voutrum for a Day Bells? And Mezid. The subject of his hallmark painting, Pirot, Gilles, is an actor in a white satin costume who stands isolated from his four companions, staring ahead with an enigmatic expression on his face. What is final masterpiece, The Shop Sign of Gerstnt? exits the pastoral forest locale for a mundane urban set of encounters. Painted at Wada's own insistence, in eight days, working only in the mornings. In order to warm up his fingers, this sign for the shop in Paris of the painting's dealer Red François Gerson is effectively the final curtain of Wada's theatre. It has been compared with Las Meninas as a meditation on art and delusion. The scene is an art gallery where the façade has magically vanished, and the gallery and street and the canvas are fused into one contiguous drama. Wada alarmed his friends by a carelessness about his future and financial security, as if foreseen he would not live for long. In fact he had been sickly and physically fragile since childhood. In 1720, he traveled to London, England, to consult Dr. Richard Mead 
one of the most fashionable physicians of his time and an admirer of Watta's work. However, London's damp and smoky air offset any benefits of Dr. Mead's wholesome food and medicines. Watta returned to France and spent his last few months on the estate of his patron, Abbe Ranger, where he died in 1721, perhaps from tuberculous laryngitis, at the age of 36. The Abbe said Wada was semi-conscious and mute during his final days, clutching the paintbrush and painting imaginary paintings in the air. His nephew, Louis-Joseph Wada, son of Antoine's brother Noel-Joseph Wada, 1689-1756, and grand-nephew, François-Louis-Joseph Wada, son of Louis, followed Antoine into painting. Critical Assessment and Legacy Little known during his lifetime beyond a small circle of his devotees, Wada was mentioned but seldom in contemporary art criticism and then usually reprovingly. Sir Michael Levey once noted that Wada created, unwittingly, the concept of the individualistic artist loyal to himself, and himself alone. If his immediate followers, Lancret and Pater, would depict the unabashed frillery of aristocratic romantic pursuits, Wada in a few masterpieces anticipates an art about art, the world of art as seen through the eyes of an artist. In contrast to the Rococo whimsicality and licentiousness cultivated by Boucher and Fragonard in the later part of Louis XV's reign, Wada's theatrical panache is usually tinged with a note of sympathy, wistfulness, and sadness at the transience of love and other earthly delights. Wada was a prolific draftsman. His drawings, typically executed in terroir crayons technique, were collected and admired even by those, such as Galus Orgerst, who found fault with his paintings. In 1726 and 1728, Jean de Jolien published suites of etchings after Wada's drawings, and in 1735 he published a series of engravings after his paintings, the Recuel Jolien. The quality of the reproductions, using a mixture of engraving and etching following the practice of the Rubens engravers, varied according to the skill of the people employed by Jolien, but was often very high. Such a comprehensive record was hitherto unparalleled. This helped disseminate his influence round Europe and into the decorative arts. Wada's influence on the arts, not only painting, but the decorative arts, costume, film, poetry, music, was more extensive than that of almost any other 18th century artist. The Wada dress, a long, sack-like dress with loose pleats hanging from the shoulder at the back, similar to those worn by many of the women in his paintings, is named after him. According to the 1911 Britannica, in his treatment of the landscape background and of the atmospheric surroundings of the figures can be found the germs of Impressionism. His influence on later generations of painters may have been less apparent in France than in England, where J. M. W. Turner was among his admirers. A revived vogue for what it began in England during the British Regency, and was later encapsulated by the Goncourt brothers and the world of art. In 1984 Wada societies were created in Paris, by Jean Fair, and London, by Dr. Selby Whittingham. A major exhibition in Paris, Washington and Berlin commemorated the tercentenary of his birth in 1984. Since 2000 the Wada Center has been established at Valenciennes by Professor Chris Rosso. A catalog of his drawings has been compiled by Pierre Rosenberg replacing the one by Sir Carl Parker, and Alan Wintermute is preparing one for his paintings. Mm.